Cripple Creek. A song I can literally do blindfolded. A song that I've been working on for like two years. And it's a song that I chose to play at jam session number two. And I completely choked and I don't know why. Hey everybody, my name's Mark. Welcome back to 2000 Hours of Banjo. Yes, I did not get scared off. I did go to jam session number two. That was this past Monday. It's now Wednesday. And Cripple Creek is what I decided to play because I thought I knew it so well. But when it came to my turn to perform Cripple Creek, I was all over the place. I was doing so many different things wrong. It was unbelievable. And I've been trying to do a bit of a post-mortem as to why I was doing so bad in order to try to help myself so I perform better next time. And this is kind of what I've come up with as far as why I didn't do so good on a song that I know so well. So number one is nerves, right? This is still a group of strangers to me. I'm starting to get to know their names, but I don't know them that well. And there's some really good talent in this group and they're intimidating. And this particular week, as a, compared to last week, was bigger. There was like 13 people, including me, in this jam session, whereas last week, I think it was like more around seven or eight. And so when it came to my turn, I had a bigger crew to kind of perform in front of. And I would say that nerves do play a role. Now, it's a bit like public speaking. Uh, and I know that public speaking is a lot of people's biggest fears. I public speak as part of work. and I do that so quite frequently. And, and, I, and I'm used to it. But this, is, this was different. It's obviously different. Um, also, I guess you can say that I public speak on things that I know well, and I can't say that I necessarily know how to play with people well, even though I knew the material well, and that may have added to the poor performance. The other thing that was kind of bothering me that I noticed last week is that when people play, <laughs> when it's their turn to play the song, uh, they just play it. There's no real warming up. Yeah, I played Cripple Creek blindfolded, but um, it's at the end of practice. I practiced two hours today. I practiced Cripple Creek, obviously. I even practiced with my eyes shut to make sure that I could play Cripple Creek blindfolded to do the demo at the beginning of this video. So I had a lot of practice warming up to play this song. In the jam session, you don't have that warm-up period. You may have a little bit of warm-up before the jam session begins, but when it's your turn, it's your turn. You don't get to I don't know, just play the song once or twice through to make sure you got it before you kick everybody in. Um, this is both good news and bad news. It's bad news right off the, off the get because um, I do need more extensive warm up, but it's good news knowing that once you've got more experience like the rest of the folks in this, um, this jam session, you don't really need as much warm up to, to perform, to play that song. So that's good, but right now I'm suffering pretty bad. Um, in addition, I would say going back a little bit on this whole issue of being uh, nerves in front of the bigger group, I was really, really tense. I was, it felt like I was trying to push my fingers through the head of the banjo. I was, certainly had a stranglehold on the neck of the, of the banjo and I, and that certainly affected my ability to perform. I mean, I got so lost that um, that I was actually some partway through the song. I was playing on the wrong frets. Let alone, I completely forgot to do any backup. I, I played the lead part, and then when it was my turn to pass the break to somebody else, and don't get me started on how badly I flubbed that part of the jam session up. Um, I should have gone into my backup section um, or portion of Cripple Creek, which again, I know how to do even blindfolded, and yet I didn't even do it. I didn't even think to do it. So there's that. Um, and then it gets to hearing. There was so much noise with 12 other players this time. 
I couldn't really hear myself. I couldn't hear where I was in the song. I visually saw that I was on the wrong frets. I was on, I was uh, three frets down instead of two, fr or three step frets up instead of two frets up. But I really couldn't hear myself to notice the difference. So acoustically, I was lost in the song and had no idea where I was. And I, had, I don't have the wherewithal right now to just kind of take everything in to figure out where I am in the song and then pick up where I'm supposed to be and, and move again forward. Now, I mentioned that I kind of screwed up passing the break. These, there's these rules as the, um, as the person who is performing the song that um, when other people in the jam want to solo, you kind of look at them nod to them. If they nod back, they've got the next break. I misunderstood and figured that now that they've got the break, it's their turn to look for the next person to give the, the solo to, but it was actually me and I wasn't doing that. So everybody was confused. I was confused. And, and so the song just kind of deflated uh, very quickly and, and didn't, uh, the, I think there were people that wanted to do breaks that didn't, or I, I don't, I don't even know. I'm, I was so lost. Um, but I'm, I'm still trying to learn the rules of the jam sessions. This is my fault, certainly for not understanding how the, the, when it's your song, what you're supposed to do in this particular jam. I don't know. The other thing, honestly, is, is how to start. Um, when it was my turn to, to do my song, um, and I noticed this last time as well, there was no counting. Nobody's counting in. Nobody's going one, two, three, four, and then go. They just, at least as I can tell, go. Uh, I'll have to pay more attention next time to see if there's like a, a lead in or, or anything like that that they're doing before people jump in and start playing with the, uh, the person who picked the song, but there's no counting in. And that's, so I just, I just, <laughs> I just started. And, and then everybody's like, oh, I'll start playing. <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't know exactly. I'll have to talk to the, uh, the jam lead uh, well before the next session to figure out how am I supposed to bring everybody into the song to make sure that our timing is correct. So not, not a great experience. Again, not a really great experience. Am I, is it daunting? Yes, it continues to be daunting. The guys at the jam session continue to be uh, so wonderful and, and so accommodating. I, I forgot my tuner. I actually, I brought my capo in fact, um, I don't know where my capo is, but I brought my capo and I actually capoed for a couple of songs. I probably capoed my instrument wrong because I'd never capoed my instrument before. But I, had, I did bring my capo, but I forgot my tuner and other people were like, here, you can borrow my tuner. Um, they pat, a lot of people printed out their songs and passed them around. So uh, I, I grabbed as many copies of all the songs as I can get so I can add them to my binder. Uh, I'm probably going to need a new binder. That's getting pretty full. Um, so I, I'm getting the material. Everybody's been really wonderful. I, I didn't mention this last time, but I'm the, I'm the youngest guy there for, by a good 20 years. I'd say everybody in there on average is about 70. And they're just whooping my butt. Like, I leave this, but I, I sleep so good after a jam session because I'm just wiped out. These guys are wiping me out. Um, but they're really, really nice. They're really friendly. Um, one guy is just constant with the bad dad jokes. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> he's really, he's the uh, mandolin player from last week that said I was, um, my, I'm, on Boil Them Cabbage Down, I had good timing. He was a little quiet <laughs> with the compliments this time around. I didn't get any compliments this time around. Uh, I would absolutely say my performance was much worse this week than it was last week. And I don't, I, I don't know. I was really confused. I was, I was quite frustrated. After the jam was wrapping up, I was in the corner 
um, you know, with my banjo mute on, just playing Cripple Creek nice and cleanly. And it's like, why couldn't I just did the same thing earlier? But I think I'm getting down to it. I was tense. I was nervous. I couldn't really hear myself. I didn't know how to start the jam. I didn't know how to pass the lead onto other people or the break to other people. And I just lost my way uh, completely. So I need to learn, I need to just go, keep going to more jam sessions, learn to calm down, relax, and um, listen, you know, really listen to myself and to other people and where we're supposed to, where I'm supposed to be in the song. Uh, learn the rules and so forth. There's other things too that I immediately did uh, when I got home. There's other things in addition, thanks to the comments that I'm getting on my last video, things that I'm also incorporating. Number one, iTunes. Like the first thing I did was uh, I'm grabbing these songs that people like to play. I'm writing them all down and I'm buying them on iTunes to build a library. And I am... Uh, so I can be familiar with the songs. A lot of these, I'm just not even familiar with the songs. Singing. Um, I mentioned that I wasn't sure if I would be singing. Yep, I'm singing. I'm, I'm singing. I'm trying to learn the lyrics. Uh, am I doing it in front of people? Heck no, I'm not. I'm doing it in my car while I listen to the songs I bought on my way to work and back. So I'm, I'm doing it in the car while I'm commuting just so I can try to learn lyrics. Hopefully that will help me learn how to recognize where I'm supposed to be in the song. Um, again, this was, these are suggestions from comments from the last video. Again, thank you very much for those. So I am singing. There's a couple of books that I'm buying. Uh, one that Mac Plays Banjo uh, recommended. If you haven't checked out his channel, he, he's pretty cool. Uh, he comes up with a lot of original stuff. So check out his a YouTube channel that's Mac Plays Banjo. And he commented about um, picking up a, a book on Banjo Backup, which I, I just ordered. It hasn't gotten here yet. Um, Strum Machine, all these songs that I'm buying in iTunes, I'm also loading into my Strum Machine app. And then um, I'm also trying to pay attention to what key the other members of the jam session like to play their songs in so I can get more familiar with those keys, particularly the one, four, and five chords because the one, four, and five progression um, is fairly common. I now know what one, four, and five means in the Nashville numbering system. It's the first, fourth, and fifth chord of that key. So in the key of G, it would be or is it GCD? Um, I believe it's GCD, is the first, fourth, and fifth chord. Because I'd hear them say, oh, this one's got uh, one, uh, one, one, four, five, and uh, a two minor or something like that mixed in. And so I'm, I need to be famil more familiar with the keys. The keys that are popular are G, A, and D. Um, at least in this last session that I recorded. So that's where I'm going to start with. Um, in addition to all that, because I, I have been, you know, this is 2000 hours of banjo and I've been counting all my hours. I'm going to add a jam counter of swords to the bottom of the video. It's either going to be on this corner or that corner. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to put it, but I'm going to keep a, 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 a jam counter along with an hour counter. So you can see as I progress, you know, if you check back with me in a couple of months, it's like, oh, Mark's at, you know, he's, he finally broke a thousand hours and he's got like 10 jams under his belt. Let's see how he's doing now. I want that fairly obvious on uh, the thumbnail or somewhere in the video description so that you can see uh, and keep track at home at where I am and how far I've progressed. I feel, I honestly feel this is going to make me progress quite a bit. It is very intensive. It's like, it's like jumping into uh, a, a foreign language, na a nation with a foreign language and just immerse, immersion training. 
<laughs> That's what it feels like. Oh, I certainly feel as loud. They might as well be speaking Greek most of the time because I really can't understand them. Anyway, that was jam session number two. Not great, not a great performance, but um, I'm motivated. I'm loving the comments. You guys are giving me great advice in the comments. Keep it up. I will see you next time. Stay tuned to see how jam session number three. I may not give a jam report for every session. I'm not, probably not gonna do that. I don't have the time to do that. But stay tuned and when I put out videos, I'll probably at some point talk about the jam session, whichever jam session that was and give you a progress report. All right, thanks for watching. I've got lots of practice to do. I will see you next time. Bye.